All right. Let's, let's give it a try. Let's Thank you. Sorry Thanks. for disturbance. Uh, software team. This is the most important part, in my opinion, because all the hardware and software are actually done by engineers. And this is the area where I believe we can work the most, and this is the most important ingredient. And you know, to make people work smoothly, to have they give them the space to grow, we have to have some kind of order, some kind of guidelines, some kind of the framework they can work in. And we trust that we will work with Scrum. And the next item is two most important stakeholders product owner and scrum master. And the two people who are really driving the way how team is working, defining how the product will look like, and working together can really change the way how the whole team and the organization is working together. And now will be our first cooking, first baking. Uh, this is something what I was trying to do, or maybe I have done. I was relying on the scrum guide. And let's see how it looks like. First of all, a little bit of background information. Um, our team is small part of the much bigger organization. Uh, we're just delivering uh, our piece of the application. Uh, and then it's used by uh, devices team uh, to, to program the radio and then by the customers. This huge organization uh, works in the safe environment and they're still using the releases and milestones. So, a little bit of waterfall, a little bit of agile with the safe approach, but this is the this is the organization that definitely we cannot change because we're just putting a small piece uh, to them. So uh, we have also product owner. The product owner is a person who is working in our organization for a very very long time. He's very successful in the, what he's doing, and he know product very well. He know customers and business very well. And you know, he wasn't keen on Scrum. He just didn't, they didn't saw why he should, follow, he should follow Scrum. He was focused on the uh, projects, on delivering on time and things like this, not on the sprints. Magda, how did you feel that time? You know, I was trying to convince him that he should be more engaged in daily day work of the developers. He should uh, deliver us uh, priorities of the stories, priorities of the work which should be done. And you know, it was very frustrated because it wasn't no, it wasn't his area. He was looking just up. He was looking on other things, not really on the on the teams on the development. He just would like to have all of the things deliver on time, and that's it. How the work looks like at time? You know, uh, he was demanding all of the feature. It was very difficult to convince him that he should give us more priorities. Uh, all of the uh, request, what is more important, what, what is less important was uh, moved on the other level to the other person, I mean, our tech lead. Because we have to somehow deal with this kind of uh, uh, working with the product owner, so we had tech lead. And David was one of the most uh, busy person in the team uh, because he was taking all the technical decisions that product owner didn't take, and he was delivering that decision to the teams. Uh, as you imagine, bus factor one on the one person who really drive the uh, the definition of of features, the definition of stories. Uh, it was very hard for him to uh, to really take that role. However, he was really dedicated to, to carry on all the responsibilities. Mark, was it working with this technical lead as a one person for all the teams? You know, it was very convenient for, for me because I have one person on side by side, which I can talk, which I can convince to do some uh, different experiments, to, to, to use some different agile technique, techniques. And you know, it was very convenient to the teams because they have someone who know everything uh, just by sight and ask him a question. But you know, it was very tiring for this person. He was the only source of truth, maybe not only, but uh, this uh, really next to us, uh, source of truth, and uh, he had to answer all, all on all of the questions. I think it was very tiring for him. As you imagine, he was driving the refinement meetings. He also driving the improvements uh, backlog. So very very busy person. 
And usually, uh, as a, in the Scrum, we all, we all we have the Scrum teams. We have three uh, Scrum teams composed of eight people. They were pretty happy because uh, they have someone who can answer on his uh, on the question. There was a person who can be blamed on lack of some information. So uh, from the pro team point of view, that work was uh, delivered uh, by, by uh, PO and tech lead. And they just had to uh, focus on the sprint delivering. They didn't uh, think about the wider picture, about the uh, project, about the product of, uh, as a whole. Magda, what was the morale of the team that time? As I said, I think they were com they feel comfortable. On the other hand, I think it was you know easy to blame someone that you haven't got all required information. So when people are in such comfort zone, it doesn't mean that they are happy. Still, there is someone you can blame of. And the backlog. To be honest, the backlog was prepared quite in quite well shape. Uh, because we have a tech lead who was really driving the backlog refinement, who was making sure that the old stories are there and that the team is, is understanding these stories because he was participating in and leading all these refinement meetings. Um, what was the most critical gap in that backlog, Magda? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the tech lead know everything. Team just rely on him and it is ask the question outside the team, outside the organization. So it was the, the most uh, bad thing about our backlog and the uh, way of how team was working. On the other hand, I was focused on the Scrum Guide. I was trying to work mostly with the product owner. For, uh, I was trying to change his behavior. You know, it wasn't easy because he, the way how he was working for a long time was uh, appreciated by the people, by the management. So it was really, really difficult to convince him that we should uh, treat uh, our teams and behave differently. Uh, I believe that uh, we, uh, during different experiments, uh, find out the way that the teams uh, have been delivering uh, this what was fun in the sprint and uh, they were most of less pretty okay with the situation like it was. Uh, but, but as I mentioned, we are, we were was focused on the sprint, on the sprint backlog, on delivering the sprint. We didn't look on the wider pictures, on the releases, on the milestones, and this all was required by uh, for uh, from us to to deliver on time. And not always it happened, unfortunately. And as a result, yeah, we have a cake. I believe it was kind of the half baked cake. Uh, but you know, it is only Damian perspective. I have done a lot of experiments. We really developed ourselves. We, we were really happy about this one, how we how we delivering our product, what we are doing, and what happened. Damian happened. So as you imagine, that was the time I uh, joined this kitchen. And from my perspective, well, product wasn't delivered on time. Uh, there was a really frustrated tech lead because he was so busy working 10, 12 hours a day. Uh, Scrum master fighting with product owner about the Scrum guy. Product owner dissatisfied, dissatisfied because he's still fighting with someone. And uh, however, team was quite content. Team was quite happy with this uh, way of working. However, we are also missing transparency. What the teams are really doing, what are the goals, uh, what they will be working the next Screen, next to screen and yeah that was that was my observations and then we did a second baking and uh, this time we follow uh, what Michal Klok told me some time ago that the role of the manager is to catch all the balls that are falling from the table and figure out where they should uh, belong to uh, with my kind of the first assessment uh, we start doing some changes together with Magda so, as I said, Diamond has come and, uh, you know, new person in the new in environment. He just saw all of not working things which we just used to. And, you know, he, he also had uh, the really straight uh, uh, requirement. He would like to be focused on delivering on time, focus on the customer, on dependencies, uh, make less of these dependencies. 
and we start work and start defining new framework. And that was a uh, lot of discussions and fighting with Magda about different ideas. As you mentioned, I usually have tons of the ideas and Magda was cutting all of the bad ones, keeping just the best ones uh, still on the plate. And as Magda said, I focus on delivering on time because then we're building trust in our product owner. Uh, I was focusing on building transparency that product owner is not surprised. Even if the situation is not good, definitely he shouldn't be surprised. And uh, kind of the water style work, visualization of, of work, preparing the plan for next quarter, next quarter, uh, to see where we are heading. Are we able to deliver everything what was promised to business team? And, uh, and that product owner again, understand all these dependencies and understand the risk we are having. And you know, it wasn't easy. I understand that we have to do something differently. And we were defining a new framework. I Diamond is pretty, he's crazy, man. <laughs> Come on. And you know, he has a lot of crazy ideas. And to make them working, to make them really possible to implement, we had sometimes really good fighting, really good exchange of ideas. And you know, sometimes it was really, really hard. But finally, we, we uh, cake some, bake something good. I believe. And please let us share how it looks at the moment. I would like to add one more thing. <laughs> this brainstorming with Magda was very, very important because Magda was working this team for much longer than I. I got just the first impression based on the first impression, trying to, to do some changes. Magda already knew the history, history of the team and uh, the dependencies within the team, the mood of the team. So she helped me a lot by cutting this crazy idea, the most crazy idea. But let's go one by one. No changes here. We are again the small piece of the bigger product. And we didn't influence that part at all. However, we focus on understanding how they are working, how they really implemented a safe, uh, safe uh, agile. Is it really safe or just uh, some uh, a version and we're also focusing on work alignment just to make sure that we are understanding what is expectations to our, our team and uh, opposite side that everyone understands what we are delivering when and why we just made a decision that this is not a moment to change everything we were focused on our level at the moment and product owner you know we had a few options i would say First, I can still do what I have done previously. So I was trying to convince product owner that he should be more uh, close to the team, was should cooperating with the team. Or there was one more option, just lead by example. No changing product owner, change everything else and show him that it is good. As you imagine, we keep product owner as he is. And that means we leverage his biggest and strongest area, very close cooperation with product owners, very close cooperation with business and customer needs, and use his knowledge, use his uh, abilities to really help our teams to grow, to deliver a better product. Uh, that time, yes, Magda? I would like only to say about uh, one thing which was changed. Uh, regarding product owner and cooperation in the team. It is Scrum of Scrums meeting, which we held every every day, which are holding it, uh, them every day. And uh, more I will tell you about this meeting you later, but there is a, a space when team can cooperate on a pro with con product owner and ask him all of the required question and uh, get the answers. And the lead, which we mentioned previously, you know, it was really, it is still really very smart person, but he just burned out. He had too many responsibilities and just take a decision to leave our team, unfortunately. And we get into a situation where we're missing most experienced person. And again, a couple of the options. Uh, the first and most obvious one was to find another brave person who will take this role. 
and try to drive all the refinement, all the story definitions, feature definition with all the teams together. But having person that could be really burned out after one year of working, again with bus factor one, it wasn't the best option. However, it's still possible. Uh, the second option we discussed was to follow a bit of less framework and have a product owner for one or two scrum teams. Uh, that the product owner is really focused on the stories, on features, on definition of, of the requirements, locking down what needs to be delivered, what value is that we are delivering to the market. That time, it would require additional two or three positions that unfortunately we didn't have a budget for. Uh, and the next option, which was kind of the crazy idea, have a tech lead in each of, in each of the team. Uh, it's going to be very hard, hard to do, hard to convince uh, teams to take that role. Uh, because at the beginning, they will don't know what the tech lead was doing. They didn't have the right skills, right abilities, but it, will, uh, it, would, it would allow people to grow. As you probably can imagine, we just took this last possibility. So now we have captain in each team this technical lead who is take care about the uh, product and he takes care about the preparing the backlog preparing the feature find all the required information uh, for the from the uh, not only inside product owner but also from the, our organization we, which uh, with it, which we cooperate and the person who had to go outside the team and gather all the required information do you remember how team reacted when we give them this idea? <laughs> yeah, they were very happy because you know they um, they said that uh, come on, you want us to be our the product owners, you want us to make more than just developing. We have to gather all the required information, talking with the people who we, we who we don't know. And you know, they wasn't very happy about it. More responsibilities, no one to blame, no tech lead outside the team who, who they can ask, oh come on, you didn't tell you didn't find this information. Oh come on, we can't start this work because we don't we did, don't have uh, such or other information. Yeah. On the other hand, there is a, a space to grow for this person, to new, to learn new skills, and you know, to spread uh, contacts uh, in the whole organization to learn more about not only this small part which uh, they, which are we doing, but about the whole product, how it works. Yeah, we invest a little bit more in training for that people uh, for soft skills training and. Uh, after a couple of weeks, I already received uh, a first positive feedback that actually is working, that guys are really engaged. And if, even next month, uh, they have a meeting with product management team to talk about the new features for the new radio, which is coming to the market. They were making a demo to that person, getting a feedback, even product manager found one of the issues uh, with the business requirement, which was really good. Uh, also, uh, that give us much better communication path with the rest of the organization and the functionality we are preparing is to be done in both sides in our application and also on the radio side with captain within the team uh, the commission will communication was much easier because he was talking directly with kind of the captain on the firmware side and they were discussing all the technical details all the technical issues and really making the solution working at the end uh, with the two different parts working together and you know it also influenced our teams so at the beginning we had three teams composed of eight people and we decided that maybe we should think over this idea idea and find out what options we have one option was to keep the same teams um, as they working right now eight or uh, eight engineers it's quite okay and uh, definitely teams were working in this uh, setup for more than one or two years. They knew each other very well. Uh, they have a good balance of hard and soft skills. But it just, it was quite okay with working with, with, with them together. And uh, the second option was to 
go with the small teams. Uh, reduce the team size to five engineers and have a four scrum teams. That gives some option with the sprint goal. Finally, we would have a one sprint goal for the whole team and all the team could work together. With the bigger team, we I noticed that there are two or maybe even three scrum goals uh, because they are getting into two, three small uh, scrum teams working just under one, one label. Uh, smaller teams mean also better communication because there are less engineers. That time, yes, that time we're also working in the office and uh, such a small scrum team could just sit together and the stand-ups is just rotating chairs uh, in the one direction and, and that's all, that's the stand-up for small team. The last option that was to use kind of the big team big team without separation to the small team and by manager or maybe product owner, cherry picking the best engineers for particular job. This is how it was done in Motorola a couple of years ago. It was working quite fine. Uh, however, managers and product owners usually pick on the same guys for the same time of the job. And a couple of the engineers are really growing uh, with the knowledge and the rest of them are just sitting on defects or some minor tasks. And as you can imagine, we chose small teams. There was a meeting when we give uh, the constraints that there has to be at, at least one senior in the team versus the junior uh, member of the team. They have to be the diverse the knowledge and uh, skills in the team. And uh, they just have to choose which team they will uh, be a part of. And you know, Two teams co composed very quickly. Two teams had an issue how to do it, uh, and they wasn't very happy about the result. Uh, it wasn't a smooth uh, change. And you know, even one team ca called themselves say, called themselves themselves temporary team. So it uh, just showing that they wasn't happy about this change. On the other hand, you know, thanks to this tech lead, which we mentioned uh, in each team, these captains in each team, it make uh, also the possibility to grow for other people in the team, because uh, it occurs after some time that not only this captain gathering information about the requirement, uh, uh, that gathering information about the features and can decompose the features. This uh, this uh, function was moved to other team members and they can just grow in better. I would like to say that temporary team is still there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's almost more than one year and they still temporary. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm calling that the, the teams took the end-to-end -to -end responsibility. And uh, when I'm saying end-to-end -end responsibility, I mean, they start gathering requirements they were doing story breakdown. They were assessing the stories, assessing the risk, doing the estimation, of course, doing the implementation itself, doing the automation test on the low level, also doing manual tests uh, with the when full solution is there, doing the fixes. And uh, what we tried, and we were trying to do it, works a couple of times uh, quite well, what Merlin said, uh, start finishing, stop starting. That means one team is delivering one feature, and when it's done, it's taking another one. It's not working so smoothly as I thought. However, we still uh, working in this uh, in this direction to have a one feature where all team really focus on. You know, this uh, decision about one feature per one team we broke a few times. A few times, I would say it was not very a lot of time. But you know, we always pay a fee for it. Yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a good idea. Sometimes you know we had a deadline and uh, the decision was okay. We have to finish it on exact time, but it wasn't a good decision because this communication gap was really really big in this uh, in this area. So yeah, this is not a good idea. And you know backlog because we change uh, the lead position, product owner is like it he was. Uh, we changed team, so also uh, we have to think about the backlog. So uh, we can uh, define the backlog on level team uh, and uh, for, for try to convince the product owner to define this backlog. 
as you can imagine, it wasn't happen. We also can uh, leave the product owner on the, his high level. He's focused on, on the features. He's saying which feature is more and less important. And uh, team is, uh, is focused focus on, uh, pro on the, uh, composing the features to the uh, backlogs uh, for the sprint and how it should look like. There was also one more option to have a one common backlog for all the teams. And whenever team is free or ready with the feature they were working on, just taking one from the top of it. In my opinion, at that time, it was very hard to, to implement. And it would, would be also very hard to work with, uh, with our partners and other side of the organization. And we didn't introduce it. However, it's still uh, an option for it's us. Still option for yeah. us. So as I said, we decided that our product owner will be focused on this higher level of the feature. He will be prioritizing him, them and uh, deliver information to the team, what is more or less important. and. Of course, we have deadline, so where we have to finish the features. And one of the very important things we need to mention, uh, refinement starting a lot of time. Refinement is not just a half an hour meeting uh, per week or a couple of minutes on every standup. Uh, gathering the requirement, clarifying with uh, product management, clarifying with different product owners from the organization takes time. And this is counted as a regular work within the sprint with a proper plan for it with the proper communication. You know, now, now uh, delivering features takes more time, but this uh, first step is com the composing the features, the understanding the features is the crucial for our backlog, crucial for our delivering. So this has to be a uh, real work. It has to be counted in the sprint. It is different like a uh, scrum guide is uh, saying, but for our uh, our working way of work, it was very, very important. And uh, yeah, it make our features take all longer. On the other hand, teams understand these features better. And as you can find out, we are very happy about our results. Okay, no, it is much more better than it was previously, at least from our point of view. We have baked this and we think it is it is good. On the other hand, we know that it can be seen this way only by us because we are so involved in it. We are we have done a lot of the try experiments, and you know it is just our hard work. And you know now we will have new manager on our board. And he has an uh, uh, ex-Scrum master. He has a very good uh, agile approach. This is Lukas Vilava. And we think he will show this what we do stop to see. Because we know we stop quarreling with, between each other. We stop fighting because we see the, the situation the same way. We need someone else to show, show us, come on, look, it doesn't work really good. And to be honest, after the first week, he already <laughs> started writing a uh, important question that we didn't ask together with Michael. I would like to say one more thing. Uh, we think that this, this uh, cookies are much better because our project metrics are better. Uh, we start getting, the, we start delivering on time. Quality is okay, maybe it could be much better, uh, but the trust of, of our partners in the other side of organization is much higher than previous because when we said we deliver something, uh, on particular milestone when they start, for example, testing of applications functionality, we are just delivering on time. And that helps a little bit, that's helped and much for, for introducing any other changes and just working together with a bigger part of the organization. Let's summarize our achievement in more structured way, as I would say. So we believe that our team are now stronger because they take decision by themselves about this, what is important, what is less important, and just they just confirm the decision with the product owner. They are contacted with the people outside our organization, gathering information because they have to do it. They, uh, from one point of view, uh, have a possibility to know new people. On the other point of, point of view, they understand our product better. They better understand how customer is using the, our product. And you know, there is no bottleneck. Now everyone 
is responsible for gathering information so everyone can answer the question or know who he or she should ask for more details. I believe we have a satisfied product owner. Product owner could really focus on business, on discussion on features, which are of them are most important, which needs to be delivered right now, which is the next release. And uh, he just expecting more better results, better transparency of the work. And what is most important for me, whenever we need him, he got time for us. And uh, he's helping with tough cases, easy cases, with any questions we are having for him. Satisfied for the owner us, gives a much more freedom for us uh, to make more experiment, more changes uh, to working with our, with, with our team. And that, that's what I mentioned previously, our Scrum of Scrums. You know, I saw several examples of implementing some of implementation of Scrum of Scrums. And this one is working for a, more than one year. And it is still the area to ask questions, to share uh, any information which is needed, to collaborate, to ask questions to the, um, other teams, to product owner. I really uh, keep uh, it to not uh, make it a, uh, a meeting for, for uh, how the work is going on, status meeting. I really care about it that it is uh, the place for free exchange thoughts, problems, information. And this is also the escalation point. There is an area when we can ask product owners all of the required, uh, required question, all of the risk which is coming to discuss this risk on this level. And uh, it looked like uh, this way that all of the team members are invited on this meeting, also from the Krakow, like, like it from the USA, USA, USA part. Uh, team uh, is, make a, is making the decision who will be on this meeting. Sometimes it is one rep team representative, some there are a few people who would like to ask questions. And you know, this is really, really well working meeting where all the information can be exchanged, all of the questions can be asked. Product owner is almost always on that meeting. Uh, product architect is also there. We also got a uh, person responsible for for quality in our organization. So the most important stakeholders around the meeting, just waiting for, for questions to help teams to, to solve the current problems. Less development, uh, does mean less coding. This is something which is good and bad. It's really bad because most of our engineers are developers who like to make more code changes. However, uh, because team are gathering requirements, uh, running the test, uh, even defining the test scenarios that are growing in this area. Uh, it's less development, but more other work. Uh, within this team organization, uh, everyone could be a kind of the small product owner for one, two months, just leading the feature that team is, is running right now or take an architecture role for some changes and really discuss with everyone in the within organization what needs to be changed. And he can try, is it something that is fitting his career in the future or not? So less development, but more other opportunities to try what's gonna be the future for each of the team, team members. And as uh, Justina mentioned in her, present, at, at her presentation, it is not always uh, be productive means to deliver more code. It is sometimes to deliver smarter resolution, to understand the product and to deliver something what is really working, not only code, but also the test and be responsible for all of the work which it has to be done. Transparency of work. One of the my personal fundamentals of, of work. Transparency of work is very, very important for me. Uh, what we did here, what we did here is we doing kind of the waterfall planning. We're really looking into next uh, two, three, four months in future and planning which team will be uh, leading which of the future when they will be planning to, to complete it. However, this plan is changing. Every sprint, the plan is updated with the new findings, new estimations, and new risk that, that team is uh, 
uh, is finding. Why I'm talking about this with transparency of work? Because this high level plan is weekly check with product owner. Product owner is aware about the problems, is aware about some delays of work, and also the times when we are delivering work much faster than we thought. Because plan is constantly changing and he's aware about all of the changes. Again, like Magda said, during Scrum of Scrum's meetings, all the issues are raised. Product owner is aware about every critical items, every hard discussion between engineers about the implementation of design. On the other hand, you know, as we mentioned, uh, our uh, external organization, our people which we cooperate uh, in this big uh, product, product uh, you know, they are working safe. They have the straight, straight milestones. And this way of working, when we have this inside plan, it is connection between our scrums, our sprints, which I mentioned before, that we previously were focused on the sprints. Now we are focused on the sprints, but we are looking ahead. We know what is the, what is on our path on the other steps. So this way, also team understand what is required, what are the next steps when, when we have deadline. And if something is going bad, they just highlight this and we can discuss it together and make a conscious decision in this area. With the product owner, with the team, it is just cooperative discussion here. And the summary. You know, we presented here our attitude, what we have done, what was our history. But there is something exact thoughts which we would like to share with you, something what uh, we want you to stay with you after this presentation. And you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, I had, uh, I had a Scrum Guide and I was trying to make everyone working according to Scrum Guide. I was so focused to make everyone uh, a model role as it was written in the Scrum Guide, so I forget about the reality. And during the time, during the new experiments, during the, the things which was happened, I realized that guidelines are not are only guidelines. And uh, law, it is not a law. We have to look on our side, on our environment, on, on our product, how we are working, where you are, when we are, how it looks like our environment, and to just try to attitude to it, to do something what make us working better. And guidelines can help us, they should not stop us. And the second method is that, trust me, you cannot change everything. I tried that. <laughs> Accept the things how they are working and focus on the things that you can really have impact on it, you can really change. And uh, by doing the changes in the areas where you have influence, when you make the changes, you are building a trustful relationship with your stakeholders and you will be able to do even more changes in the areas you never thought before. Uh, it's always, whenever you're coming to the new team, uh, you're thinking that everything is not working right, it could be done better. Of course, it always could be done better. But you need to choose wisely which of the areas gives you the most benefits and which of the areas you can really change, you can really impact uh, by your decision. And regarding the cooperation with the other teams, with the product owner, we decided just to lead by example. We made some changes, we just proved that we can do our work better and the way how it's working is worth to be followed. And that's why we have a space to discuss with product owner and the for, for the cooperation. Thanks to productivity and the visibility, uh, we, we built the trust between us and, custom, and the product owner. And thanks to it, this trust, we now cooperate better. And here we are. Me, Magdalena Sotkaskarok. And then Kush. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, you can ask. And thank you for your attendance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Damien Magna. So allow me to share the stack yes. where there is at least one question and maybe more will appear. Uh, so allow me, I will take your screen now. So I hope that you can see the Slack. And there is a question from Magda. I hope that you can see it. Uh, 
from Yarek. I'd like to be a quality engineer with a with product. <laughs> okay. uh, regarding how they feel about those changes. Let me take it. Okay. Um, when I joined this team, uh, I did my expose just to introduce myself, a couple of the words about me, a uh, couple of most important rules, uh, which I'm trying to, to live with. And then we start introducing changes. And they were so surprised that the team didn't understand why we're making these changes, what benefits it would give us. And kind of after 100 days, I make the presentation, the way of working, how I would like that teams will be working, why I'm making these changes. And they told me that finally you said you should do it in your second or third week, not in the third month of, of working with us. And actually that was kind of the breakthrough. And uh, when team understands why we're making all these changes, where we would like to be, how we imagine the world will be working, will be working with all of us, then they really start following all these ideas and are working according to this, uh, to this kind of the rules we set up together with Magna. And you know, there was a moment on time when a lot of things were changing. Uh, the uh, manager was changed, we changed the teams, the attitude, the work was changed. So, you know, there was a huge uh, change for them, once again change. Yeah, and uh, next, uh, you know, from time from next uh, step to next step, they they, they just understood that uh, this is what Damian said at the beginning. This uh, his roles and his ideas are not the bad bad, bad one, and uh, following them give us uh, some uh, value and make uh, our position better in the comparison to previous time. The next question, did your teams have training about Agile, for example, safe? If yes, well, then which? And uh, did it help? Uh, you know, we are not working with safe. This is our uh, external organization. So uh, we are not a part of this PI planning and uh, things like that. We just had from this uh, external organization deadline when we have to deliver some some features, some functionality. So it was not needed to uh, to train them with safe. They have some internal training about the agile, not but not like external one, I would say. I would like to add something. Yeah. Um, together with Magda, we are working for quite a long time, and some things are obvious for us. The way how Scrum is working, the principle of Agile is there. It's there for quite a long time. Sometimes we are forgetting we have a very fresh engineers on the board that they just learning during studies and never have experience. That was maybe we missed that training at the beginning, just to refresh what is the baseline where we should go. But actually, we didn't do it. We we make the training by doing the changes, by explaining why we're making. Uh, some moves within the team and see how we teach them how what is really about the other. Okay, did you have plans to get rid of Scrum of Scrums? Not really. No, we <laughs> want even more. We want even more. Yeah, because you know, this is very, very important meeting for us, the space to, to really discuss about the problems. And in the situation when we have uh, this product owner and the technical uh, manager for the whole of our projects in the USA. It is very important to have this person on daily basis. And uh, thanks to this uh, Scrum of Scrums, we have a po possibility to discuss all the required uh, things and just highlight problems. If they are not quick to resolve, we just know, know that we have a problem and it are, they are discussed uh, offline. Uh, this is the sign. Uh, of having too many dependencies between teams. Yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yes, that's the right sign. Yeah. Uh, we are still working on it. Definitely, this is not the finish line for uh, for our teams, and this is not the last version of the way how we're working. Uh, we are still running some experiments. We are still changing, uh, trying to, to solve one of kind of this problem.
And you know, as long as we have this product owner outside our uh, country and it is uh, in the different time zone, we have to have uh, somehow to discuss with him and have keep him uh, available. And Scrum of Scrums is one of the way to, to deal with this issue. And one more thing, you know, we have also several people which are new on the board. And when they ask question, not always uh, there is a situation that people in the team can answer this question. Our product looks simply, but it is not simple at least. Not it is not simple. So sometimes, thanks to the Scrum of Scrums, they, these people can ask a question, and then this question can be you know answered by other people, and just uh, they are saying, okay, I can help you, and uh, this work is done offline. Thank you, James. Nice to see you. Any other questions? We still have some time, so, but I cannot see an indication of more people typing, but all of you, all of our participants, remember that the channel will be open. So if you figure out like, additional questions, you can post them there and Magda and Damien can address them during today or the second day of conference. So as for now, it's quiet in the Slack. So then thank you both. Thank you for sharing your experiences.